So, I bought a lorry. So why have I bought a horse box? Well, to be comfortable when we go to race meetings. Now we do have the mobile hostel, which is our 2012 Renault Master. I will do a video on that at some point before we redo the layout in that van. Now back in 2021, I redid the layout of the van so we could sleep five people. Because at the time, a lot of people were interested in what we'd done. Friends, family, and they wanted to come along to these race meetings. The downside is, is that by outfitting the van to sleep five people, no one wanted to sleep in the van with four other people so for the last year only me and dad have used that van so i'm going to redo the layout of the van so instead of sleeping five people uncomfortably we're going to sleep two people really comfy because the way the van's layout at the moment is uh, you can't really access any of the beds or the rear sort of seating area uh, while the van's loaded up for race meeting. You've got the toolbox, you've got the welders, you've got wheels, you've got jacks, you've got everything in the way to really make the back of the van usable. But that's something we're gonna change for the van, um, hopefully before the start of the time tax season this year, and there's gonna be a separate video on that. So the reason we bought a lorry is because, again, people do wanna come, you know, and I enjoy being a host, I enjoy friends and family coming to the race meetings with us, and I want to be able to offer a space where they can come inside and sit down in the dry, in the warm, outside of the wind and the rain. Somewhere to sit down and have something to eat, somewhere to make a drink or you know, a cup of tea, make some food, whatever they want to do. And we need more space. Now, I would have liked to have bought a bigger van, but because of the COVID camper van conversion apocalypse, van prices are still ridiculous. Um, we're looking easily 15 to 18 thousand pounds plus for the next size up in a van which is like a 4.2 ton and that's that brings me on to this lorry really at this point i'm not going to tell you how much i've paid for it but i want you to drop a comment down below right now how much do you think i paid for this van the closest person um um i'll send you a surprise or something a dick pic or something so yeah lorry logical thing these are cheap to buy because they require a seven and a half ton license to drive unfortunately i don't have said license at the moment but my dad does so we're able to legally drive this to and from race meetings uh, but also the real estate that this uh that a lorry gives us really so i put the camera up and we'll just sort of uh, talk about the layout of the lorry currently so as you can see over here, we've got like a, a nice little kitchenette with a sink and a two burner hob. We've got some storage above and some storage below. Um, I can't open these because they're all locked. Uh, keys are there, but uh, there's nothing in them. Over to this side, we have got a nice little seating bench. And that'll seat three to four people, depending on the size. Above the cab is a storage area. Now, one of the things I was looking for when I was looking to purchase a horse box is A, I wanted the pass-through into the cab. Um, there's nothing worse than a driver and a passenger being isolated from any people who are sitting in the back with us. Plus, the people who are sitting in the back can pass through food and snacks and stuff to the driver and a passenger as we're going to race meetings. The second thing is I wanted an over cab bed. Now, unfortunately, uh, we don't have this in this van. What we do have is this little sort of alcove which is about a foot and a half tall, foot and a half deep. So unless you're a child or a midget, um, you ain't sleeping up there. Dwarfs, for your information, are in the circus and do cartwheels. Whereas midgets are like normal human beings, but 
shrunk down. Now we may look into extending that over the cab. Um, I've seen some examples of people doing it and it doesn't look too hard. So that's something we may consider. So that gives us a permanent bed that's always gonna be there for when we're traveling. So yeah, what we're gonna do in this area is uh, we're gonna sack off the kitchenette. Uh, we're gonna keep a kitchen in it, but we're just gonna shrink it dramatically in size. And we're gonna do a, a beef boogie on tonight. That's gone down the shit pan. I want this room here to be all seating. So my plan is to have a big U-shaped couch here. So we'd be able to sleep a person along here uh, and hopefully a person along here. So that sleeps three people. And then we should be able to introduce some like curtain poles and stuff. So, you know, people have got a bit of privacy when it comes to uh, having a cheeky wank in the lorry when we're at race meetings. That wind's got up. Uh, the other side of here is we've got this little tack cupboard. Um, I'm going to guess this was maybe used for a little uh, portable toilet at some point, judging by the frosted glass. Uh, but I think we're actually going to get rid of this completely. Um, just so, all of this room in here is uh, awkward shot out the door. Um, but all of this in here is just going to be hospitality. Uh, and then again, we'll get all these cupboards redone so people have got somewhere to put all their stuff um but in the back here is obviously uh, once upon a time is where the horses used to be situated there is a horse in my cabaret suite currently using it as a bit of a, a storage area for some parts that i'm waiting for people to come pick up uh, but this area here to give you an idea is seven and a half foot across by I think 10 and a half foot long. So that's a lot of room in here. People have said, why don't you make this so we can put the car in the back wall? We don't want to do that. I want to tow the car. I want this vehicle purely to be hospitality, sleeping, um, bits and bobs. Our plan is, is to put a permanent bunk bed here uh, with a nice sort of like four foot deep mattress. So two people could sleep there. They're more than likely gonna be mine and dad's beds and I'll kit them out nicely. Um, curtains and stuff. We'll have some like pull out drawers underneath the bottom bunk and then we'll have some storage above the top bunk. Um, and then roughly sort of in this area, um, we're gonna we're gonna move this wall this way about a foot and a half or a foot. And then I'm hoping to put in a toilet and shower in this corner here. Uh, now the toilet will be strictly emergencies only. And then it will just be nice to have a shower. Now some of the showers at these circuits are scary. In fact, I'm pretty sure the one at Snetterton um, is identical to a prison shower. You better bend over and pick that up very very little privacy and obviously i don't want people getting jealous of my my massive dong so um ideally i don't want to be naked in a room full of other people so it would be nice to have a shower on board we have got the weight capacity for carrying loads of water to do that now in terms of hot water um, we are planning to run the lorry off uh, an onboard jenny which will put underneath on the floor and that's going to allow us to run 240 volt and then we will have some 12 volt circuits in here as well especially to do about the lighting and stuff and you know, charging phones and stuff a few bit off usb sockets but um you know again for the kitchen we in the in the mobile hostel i put a five burner hob in there it's massive it's like three by two foot it's huge and we've only ever used all five rings once to make a breakfast for everyone which no one fucking ate and then other than that, Dad's only ever used it to make a cup of tea. So we don't need a massive five burner hob. So we're gonna put a single burner hob in there anyway for like bacon and stuff. Uh, but I think for the kitchenette, I think we're gonna use air fryers um, because everyone's got an air fryer these days. But again, saying that, for the last year, we very rarely cooked in the van. Um, we tend to either get food on the way to the circuit or if, or depending on what circuit you're at, we can get food delivered directly to the to the gate. Just in case we want to cook stuff, there's gonna be some sort of cooking facilities. But yeah, going back to the toilet, toilet for emergency, but it will be nice to have a hot shower. Uh, now, along this wall is, um, if you can sort of see the line where this mat is going to change colour, that's roughly going to be where the bunk beds are, which gives us all this real estate this side. So we're going to put a worktop in the length of the box here. 
and then all the toolboxes and stuff we can store underneath. I'm thinking of maybe putting a permanent mobile fabrication station in there, but then again, as someone rightfully said when I said it to me the other day, that doesn't make it very mobile if it's in here. So something we may consider, I don't know. Um, hopefully we're gonna half the height of these windows. And then we can put in a huge cabinet the length of the box to store like blue roll and oils and bits and bobs. Now we've got this door at the back that we need to seal up a bit better because it's not very, uh, you know, watertight. Uh, but we're gonna rip all the carpet off there and put decking boards on there. And the idea is, is that once we've got everything offloaded, that toolbox and stuff into the pit garages we can put that door down so it's flat we'll have some props that are made for the corners and then uh, we'll make some like little fencing panels to go on the side and then we'll have like a nice decking area for some circuits and then we've even considered then putting a little walk-up ladder to a sort of like a veranda on the roof so for some circuits especially like brands hatch you'll be able to sit on the roof and you'll be able to see the entire circuit while you sat down which will be pretty cool now the downside of this lorry um, is that it's broken it's part of the reason why it was so cheap but when we picked it up um, there's a big story but about how we ended up with this lorry um, if you ever see me in person ask me I'll explain to you it'll be easy and less boring but yeah it doesn't drive at the moment uh, the gearbox works the engine works but unfortunately um, I'll insert the video now is that the rear oil pan which is here which has unfortunately been leaking all its gear oil which has caused one of the pinion bearings to run dry and collapse and that caused the pinion to stop engaging with the crown wheel thus not engaging any sort of motion whether it be forward or backwards um, so that's something that we need to fix but I've already ordered the bits for that so hopefully we get that soon because we've had to kind of park the lorry in a bit of a, an awkward space outside the workshop and I would like to move it down the side. And now the burning question is how much I paid for this. Well, you'd be surprised to know that I paid just £250 for this, for this wagon. Um, so, you know, if we can't repair it, we should be in a position to scrap it for the price that I paid for it, if not a bit more. It's got about 600 quid's worth of tyre on it because they're still in date because of the HGV laws that changed last year. Uh, but yeah, 250 quid. Now, I've said to myself I'm going to pile a thousand pound into it to get it into a position where we can actually use it. Now, there is some welding on the cab that needs to be done. Um, it's quite a bit of welding, so I'm probably going to try to outsource that to someone. We're going to try and do justice with this lorry. Now, the walls are actually made of wood. So I won't know until I strip out all this carpet on the walls what condition the wood's in. It might be a case where we might need to put new walls in, which I don't mind doing because this window here is a bit too high when you sat here. And I would like this window to be a bit lower and put some privacy glass in there. But the good news is it wouldn't be a hard job to do. We've had a measure and it seems that all these walls are based off uh, standard eight before foot sheets. Um, so that makes putting a new wall in relatively easy to do. But again, we're going to cross that bridge when we get there. Um, we can buy a facelift front end for this from like a 2002 onwards which will transform the front end of the lorry and make it look a lot newer than what it is. Uh, we'll hide the age of the lorry by putting a private plate on it. Um, but yeah, there's all sorts of things we can do to improve this lorry for not much money. So yeah, hopefully this is going to be a little bit of a build series. If uh, I can't get anywhere with this lorry, you can pick these up for about 1500 quid with an MOT on them just. So uh, we might end up scrapping this, but either way, I'm excited to finally start a lorry build. Um, and just give us, the team, a bit of a presence when we roll up to these race meetings. So yeah, um, I'm going to leave that here. Probably waffled on way too long. Um, just trying to push this video out, so I've actually got a video going out on Friday. So uh, yeah, I just want to thank you for watching. Honestly, don't forget to share, 
any ideas you've got for the lorry, pop down in the comment section down below. Don't forget to subscribe if you already haven't to, so you don't miss out on the progress of this build. Um, notification bell, so you don't get again, so you get notified when we, we've uploaded a video about the lorry. And of course the most important thing is don't forget to tell your nan about my big lorry. See you in the next video.